I don't want to stand on the stage right now because we'll, we'll be entering into worship soon. Why don't you guys remain standing in the presence of the Lord? Um, first of all, I want to just welcome you guys to seek. You made it. Some of you drove far. Some of you flew far. Welcome, welcome. We are so excited that we get to be together. These gatherings are honestly, honestly my favorite time of year. And I'm always so expectant because I think don't think I've ever left one of these gatherings without a fresh encounter with Jesus. And it's an absolute honor to run with Ben Dionda. Can we just give honor to Ben who puts this on for us? Um, He'll be leading this morning and I'll be jumping in um, alongside Jackie and Tracy who are going to lead us in worship. But I wanted to start us off just reading the verse that's been burning on my heart for us this morning. So if you just want to close your eyes and open your hands. This is what I believe the Lord is going to be doing with us this weekend. Jesus, we love you. (sighs) Song of Songs 8, 6, and 7. Set me as a seal upon your heart, as a seal upon your arm. For love is as strong as death. Its jealousy is as fierce as the grave. Its flashes are flashes of fire, the very flame of the Lord. Jesus, I thank you. Your love is flashes of fire. Your love is the very flame of God. Jesus, we welcome your jealous love. Whoa, your jealous love for us. We open up our hearts these next two days to allow the flashes, the flame of the Lord to consume us. That Holy Spirit, you would set your seal upon our hearts. Waters cannot quench love and neither can floods drown it. Lord, we want to experience and encounter your overwhelming love for us. So no matter where people entered into this weekend, whether they're carrying a heavy load or coming out of a chaotic season, wherever your heart is right now, I just want you to allow yourself to lay every burden at his his feet this morning, to just kind of come in here and even lay down your expectations. Just lay down yourself again. Just come, wow. Come and allow him to refresh you with the flame of the fire of his love. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. We surrender again right at the beginning. We just yield all the things to you. We just put it at your feet. Wow. Just put it at his feet. Put your concerns, put that person on your mind at his feet, put the situations at his feet. Wow. Put school at his feet. (laughs) Put those worries down. We just lay ourselves down, Lord. Wow. Whoosh. Esikiela baba sete da baba. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Wow. Wow. The wind of the Lord. You're going to begin to feel a wind is just coming in and blowing off the residual. He's just blowing it off right at the start. He's just going... Just blowing all of the dross away. Thank you, Lord. Whoa! <laughs> We're going to enter in and rest. Woo! <laughs> we enter in rest. We shake off the dust of our feet. 
of the past season. You just shake it off. Shoo! <laughs> shake it off. Shake it off. Shake it off. Eso na manero. Eso na manero. There you go. There you go. Just shake it off. Whoosh! A la manero. A la manero. Thank you, Jesus. Wow. Hey. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Now just begin to just say thank you, Jesus, for your presence. Just begin to worship. Wow. Just begin to worship. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We're going in to the inner courts, allowing him to cleanse us. He sanctifies us. And we just enter into his gates with thanksgiving and with praise. Just begin to thank him. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Lift up a song. Just stir it up, stir up your worship. Precious Jesus, Jesus. Spirit, come move over us. Come 
to lift your voices and say you are good you are good and your mercy endures forever oh you are good and your mercy endures forever oh you are good
Jesus, the only one could ever say, worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, live for you, only oh, live for you, holy, there's no one like you, there's none beside in adoration of you, Jesus, just like the angels that stand around your throne and the cherubim and the seraphim who forever sing your praises, oh God. We sing holy, we sing holy is the name. He's 
This place with your presence, oh God, with your the Alpha and the Omega, Jesus, the name above every other name, oh, the name that makes demons and principalities shudder and shake with fear, there's no authority higher than the name of Jesus, Just give you songs, but we give you the adoration that you deserve. We don't just give you empty words, but we give you our broken hearts. To be overcome by your presence, Lord. Your presence, Lord. Your presence, Lord. Your presence. Lord. Oh. 
reconciled afresh to you, Jesus. Oh, the Lamb of God. Oh, the Lamb of God. Sing holy, holy, are you Lord God Almighty? Worthy is the Lamb, worthy is the
Deserve the praise, worthy is your name. Worthy is your name, Jesus. You deserve the praise, worthy is your
precious lamb was slain every tongue on earth proclaim all of heaven shout his name and they sing
Jesus is speaking Revelation 4 over us. It says, come up here. It says, come up here. Before John, he goes into a vision and the Holy Spirit appears to him. And God from the throne says to him, come up here. Up here, come up here. He says, Come up here, come up here. He's calling you to come. Up here, yes, come up here, send it. We will come up here, come up here. We're in the ascended place. The place of his throne room. We can feel his holiness and his presence here. With every spirit we call forth in this room to come up here. And the Lord's calling us to come higher. As I was sitting and just praying for you guys in this room and where he wanted to take us and what he wanted to say, the, the Lord said to me, I want to tell them to come up here. And in Revelation 4, it says, come up here and I will show you what must take place after this. I'm going to begin to prophesy over you guys. So allow your spirit to just receive what's being said. And we're going to speak out these prophetic words. We're in the throne room right now. We're going to allow the Father to speak out destiny over us and realign us with our heavenly purpose and realign us with our positioning and our place. Many of us are coming out of a chaotic season. Many have been carrying burdens and heaviness. And many are, are coming out of a season where they've been battling just to enter into rest. What I'm hearing him say is, come up here. Come up here. Whoosh. In you coming into your rightful position, your place in me, I have so many things to say. <laughs> I want to show you what's going to happen after this. We're entering into a time in the next three months, the Lord's preparing us for 2022. And the Lord told me that in 2022, it was a year of the open door. Now, what do I mean by the year of the open door? What I mean is it's not just open doors and heavenly encounters. We love that. We want that. We're going to get that. But actually, in, in 2022, this was going to be a season where so many things that have felt dormant and that haven't taken place in our lives, whether it's prophetic words or things we've been waiting to come to pass, that actually that 2022 is going to be a year of the things beginning to align and open up for us. And that means that in that year of things aligning and opening up for us, I feel like the Lord's taking us out of this chaotic season, the hecticness of even what the last two years globally has been. Yes, can anyone relate with that? Hallelujah. <laughs> but the Lord is, is beginning to actually prepare us. And I really feel 
in this next three-month period, what I saw as we were singing and worshiping is I saw the Lord just dipping us in the pool of his river. And he was just, he had us by the hand, like Father God, big God, picking us up and then just dipping us in the pool and dipping us in the pool and dipping us in the pool. And it was this refreshing and it was this washing and it was this cleansing in preparation, just getting off the old, right? Getting off what we've been through, getting the dust off of us, being refreshed in his presence, being prepared in his presence, getting the fear off of us, getting the uncertainty off of us, getting the doubt off of us, getting the regret off of us, getting the, I'm just going to give up on this thing off of us. And what the Lord is going to do is he's washing us in these next three months. And I believe that today is a beginning day for us in this room to begin to be dipped in him, consumed in him, washed in him to get us ready for 2022. 2022 is a significant year, a significant year of alignment. And many of you guys have been waiting on many prophetic words and have been waiting on many promises of God. And what I heard the Lord say is I'm going to start aligning people into destiny and into positioning. And what that's going to mean for some of us is it means some of us are going to have to move, <laughs> like actually moving locations into new lands, into new places where God's directing us and leading us. And there's a letting go there's a letting go of an old season to fully jump and launch into the new thing. And there's been a lot of turbulence in the takeoff. Actually, we haven't really taken off yet, not until 2022. <laughs> but there's this takeoff and this authority. And what I kept reading was Isaiah 22, 22. We love that passage, don't we? <laughs> Where it says, I will place on his shoulder the key of the house of David, and this is the Lord, right? So he's placing on our shoulders the key of the house of David, which is really Jesus. So he's placing on our shoulders this access to Jesus, the house. We are now the dwelling place of God. And he shall open, meaning God shall open and none shall shut. And God shall shut and none shall open. I'm here to remind you that God is the one that determines your life and your purpose. And you know that, but I want to reiterate that. God is the one that determines open doors and closed doors over your life. God is the one that can even sovereignly use circumstances of closed doors so that you would know those doors can't be opened by man, even if they look good, because I want it to be the God door that opens for you. And I will open that door over your life. And I just see there's str such strategic things that the Lord wants to do in people in 2022. There's going to be a lot of suddenly moments where it seems like impossible. There's no way that this could happen. How is this going to take place? How, like, this just doesn't even make sense. There's going to be suddenly moments in 2022. Why? Because he's saying it's the year of the open door. If you are yielded to the person of Jesus, which all of you are, <laughs> if not, we'll redo an altar call and we'll re-yield again at the end of this, which we might actually do that, <laughs> a fresh surrender. <laughs> but if you are in the purposes of God, you are in the spirit, you're following his footsteps. You are in him. And sometimes, I know for me, I'm like, I do not understand where I'm going, but I know I'm in him, but I know... I'm going to get to where I'm supposed to go. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because it's in him. And I can't, I feel like sometimes I got blinders on, like a horse when it has the blinders on. So all I can really see is what's in front of me. Can anyone relate with, in this season, sometimes I can only really see what's directly in front of me right now. I think I have an idea of where I'm going, but I really only have this here. <laughs> I feel like what the Lord is saying, not I feel, I know what the Lord is saying is there's coming a time I've been building your trust, I've been building your yieldedness to, to follow my word, to follow my direction, to come up here, to live in the place of rest, to live in a place of ascension with him in full identity, the place of rest where in that rest things just flow. Things just happen because it's him. We're not battling for it. I'm not fighting for it. I'm not living in disappointment of stuff not working out. I'm actually seated in the completed work of my destiny. 
I'm seated in the completed work of his divine purposes for my life because it was already complete in him since before the creation of the world. And when we come into this eternal higher perspective, which is what he's calling us into, is what Bob Jones prophesied about this decade, 2020, being the, the decade where we come into his rest. Coming into his rest means we're coming into a positioning of the finished work of Christ. It's not just a state of being, I feel rested all the time. Thank you, Lord. I'm so rested all the time, which I want to be in that state all the time. And that is possible in the Lord. Peace, joy, righteousness are the substances of his kingdom, right? So living constantly in peace, joy, righteousness is amazing. That's in the Bible, if anyone is asking. But in this place of peace, in this place of joy, in the place of rest, it says in Ephesians, his feet are resting on a footstool. And what is the footstool? Every principality, power, everything is a footstool under his feet. If that's where he is, that's where I am. I don't think as a bride yet we fully have that figured out yet. <laughs> but guess what? We're getting there. And we're going to get there. And in this room, the Lord's calling us into there. He's saying, come up here. Come up here here because from this place when I give you a prophetic word when I show you what's next you're not living in the chaoticness of second heaven going oh how are we gonna get there boom boom I'm getting hit by this and that and that I'm actually living from this place of victory from the place where whatever he tells me it's already done it's already done. It's finished. And I'm in the place of authority where I don't have to battle and fight for this thing. I get to live from his victory, his finished work, what he has spoken into my DNA and into the calling and purpose that I have to see it come into fruition. And the reason for this is because we've watched revivalists in the past and they've burnt out, right? They've burnt out. I mean, I, we love reading God's generals. I'm walking around now. Here I go. I'm like going to preach, preach. We, we read books like God's Generals. We, we read about these wonderful revivalists, but so many of them, they didn't have longevity. They didn't take care of their bodies, their souls. Some of them morally failed. And we, we learn from that, right? We, we honor the anointing and what God did and the fruit and the beauty. No one is perfect, but we learn from them. We learn from the Bible. We learn from the mistakes of the patriarchs. And what we're doing is we're learning and God's teaching us how to come into this ascended place. Wow. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> and from this ascended place of rest in him, we begin to learn what longevity looks like because longevity and eternity go hand in hand. Because when you get a revelation of eternity and you allow your spirit to lead you rather than just your soul and your body, and the soul and the body are beautiful. They're important. They're perfect. We need our soul and our body, but we follow our spirit leads the soul and the body. And when our spirit, we're allowing our spirit to be led by him, it is bringing us to this place where we're going to be seeing, and I love what Bob says. I'm, I'm, I, I just, I have such respect for Bob Jones. Like we're going to get to a point, he said, in the, the last days that a generation isn't going to see death. There's literally going to be a generation that does not see death. This is the finished work. This is what we're headed toward. This is what we're moving toward. I don't want my babies to see death. I don't know when I'm going to have babies, but I don't want, I want them to come into the finished work of Christ. And I want my ceiling to be their floor because every generation passes that baton off of what we fought for, what we've won from generation to generation to generation to generation. And I'm expectant for this next generation that is being raised up to be absolutely consumed by God, to be ones that walk with such power in the miraculous, all of it. But I want that for myself as well. I want more. And I'm telling you guys, 2022, the Lord's aligning us. He's getting these things in us sorted. He's showing us longevity. He's putting us into a position of rest. There's actually a grace to come into acceleration of this revelation. There's actually a grace for it. 
if it's been spoken out by the prophets, I like to receive it for myself, right? Like, well, if they said it, then I'm taking it, okay? <laughs> but wow, woo, he's getting us ready and he's aligning us with purpose. And even in things that have felt like delays or even things that feel like, well, this dream just hasn't been fulfilled. I don't know when this is going to happen. There's such a sovereignty and grace from God of just knowing divine timing and knowing when the time is right. But I have felt such an urgency in my spirit that we're in a suddenly season. And even in coming out of the chaos of 2020, 2021, I've never seen anything like it. I don't think many of us have ever experienced anything like this ever. But I almost feel like it's going to be a ha-ha from God, like in the face of the, the enemy that's like, ha-ha, <laughs> you thought you stole a year and a half of people's lives. LOL, joke's on you. <laughs> I'm actually setting everyone up for destiny and bringing them into rest. Cool. <laughs> So just to encourage you guys, you know, if you've been in it, because I've been in it, all right? I'm speaking from personal experience here. I feel like I've been through a refining fire. But the gold and that ring, that signet ring, that seal that's set upon our heart, that's the Holy Spirit. It's His Spirit. It's the ring, and, it, and it's going to grip us. A ring grips your finger. It's gripping us in covenant with him. He's gripping us, but there's been a preparation of the Holy Spirit in us through sanctification, through refining fires and seasons that he allows to happen in his kindness. I'm not saying everything was okay. I'm just saying the Lord will use it because he works all things together for good. So just know this seal is being put on our hearts. He's gripping our hearts in love. He's gripping our hearts in his goodness. He's dipping us in the refreshing river right now. He's preparing us and getting us ready for this coming season, 2022. I'm, I'm telling you, watch what happens in this coming year. Like, I love timelines and time frames. This is why the prophetic, I honor it so much, and it's so important. It gives me perspective. It gives me vision for what's coming. But he's been telling me, Hannah, stuff is opening up in this coming year, and people's hearts need to be ready. Whoa! Like, people's hearts need to be prepared. And, it, and, and the preparation is really just rest. <laughs> it's not like this, like, I need to get myself ready for all the destiny that's going to open up over me. Huzzah! Like, it's like, yeah, great. Let's celebrate, get excited for these suddenlies that are coming. But honestly, the heart needs to be readied in rest. And in rest, it's going to be easier to let go when God says, hey, in the next month, I need you to move to this city. Hey, in the next month, I need you to let go of the people that you've loved so dearly because I'm actually calling you to a new place. I'm calling you to a new job. I'm calling you to a new thing. Don't get too comfortable in what you've been in, even out of survival. Because he's like, no, 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 there's actually more in my grace and my impartation and my anointing oil is going to be on you for this next thing. Because a lot of us are crying out to move in power and in anointing and in purpose, right? Well, you start moving in power, anointing and purpose. We don't think about the other side of this. And Jesus walked in it. The pull that comes the responsibility that comes with that, the safeguarding of yourself in a healthy way that comes with that. So many of us cry out for, but we're actually not ready in our character to carry this thing. And the Lord's been getting us ready. He's been getting our character ready. He's been purifying us, preparing our hearts to carry the weight of his glory, the way that Jesus did. He worked in a timeline. Jesus, 30 years, 30 years in intimacy with the Father. He just, he, he waited and waited and waited in this beautiful timeline, and then boom, it was time. Ministry was ready to start, and he was ready for it. He was truly ready for it. It wasn't like, you know, he was released right at 20 years old. <laughs> it was like, no, we have a time frame on this thing. So no, no matter what age you are, there's a timeline God's working within and there's a character and a purity that he's building in your heart. And that purity of heart is really just a single focusedness, fo focusedness in him, right? Purity of heart isn't just about not sinning. <laughs> That's done at the cross. We get to now live as new creation. 
purity of heart is really our heart posture toward him, always from him and in him and through him. So just thank him. Just begin to, you know what? Thank him for this last season. I'm, God, I'm thankful I went through a refining fire. <laughs> feel more ready but we're never really ready we want to be relying on the spirit (laughs) hey but I want to encourage you guys as the next two days wow um roll over (laughs) and you may roll over there is an atmosphere here that's created because of what's birthed through this ministry and through Ben is is uh I don't like using levels because levels are weird, but it's very high level intercession in the sense of creating an atmosphere where you almost can come into a womb. And we like to call it the womb of understanding, which is the spirit of understanding. Um, Isaiah 11, if you would like a reference for that, Um, just so you're not throwing out things that don't make sense. But what happens in this space is you encounter him but many of you are going to begin to encounter because you've had someone praying for you and us, we've been praying and intercessors praying for you where you come into this space where prophetically he says, Revelation 4, let me show you what's to come. Let me show you what's to come. Let me show you what's to come. Many of you are going to get prophetic visions of what's coming. And some of it may only be a one word thing. One of it, some of it may just be like very clear as day, but be very expectant and yielded to a place of just being ready for what he wants to say to you. And some of you guys might be like, oh, that's kind of scary. I'm kind of comfortable where I am right now. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, come on, I have I work for Bethel. Like, how comfortable is that? Like, like the Lord's challenging me. He's like, hey, hey. How, what if you what if you weren't in the house? And I'm like, huh? <laughs> what? <laughs> He's like, hey, I brought you here. What if I want you to? <laughs> I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> I know we've talked about that before, Lord, but I don't know what you're trying to say right now. He's like, well, are you? What if I asked you to go? And then you really have to face it. Wait a minute. Wait, wait a minute. What if he asked me to go? And what that means, it's like that, that means letting go, letting go of community you've built, of a pretty comfortable position in a really great job, in a really great place, working for Bill and Chris. Come on, we love Bill and Chris. <laughs> but it's this yieldedness of heart because I feel it happening. It's time for us to be open-handed and ready for the suddenly moments, for the open doors of destiny that he has for you. If you feel, I want to activate you, if you feel, whoa, like you need to to give a a fresh surrender over, I would love, what? (laughs) You're like, (laughs) he's like, I'm not going to be able to stand. You can stay seated if you can't stand. But I actually, I'm going to have, what I'm going to have Jackie and Tracy play And I just want you to do a little bit of business with Jesus this morning, coming into this weekend and and getting ready for Eric and Katie and Richie and what's going to be released, to just really freshly surrender. Surrender your plans, your ambitions, your dreams, knowing that in 2022, open doors means your dreams will be fulfilled. But it doesn't mean we grip them to make them happen. We live open-handedly in direction by the Spirit and allow him to let it happen, right, from rest. So if this resonates with you, I almost want to do this like altar call style. I saw it in my head, and I feel like I like it. (laughs) I want you to just come to the front and do some business with Jesus if you feel, you know, I need to do this. I need to, whoa, whoa. I need to lay myself down again. I need to lay my agendas down again. I need to lay the disappointments, the the dreams that felt like stillborns inside of me. I need to lay this down again. Wow. If you want to sit in a seat in the front, that's fine as well. But just get in a place of fresh surrender to him. Jesus, I'm open to what you want to share with me. Jesus, grip my heart again. 
grip my heart again for your plans. Remember your first love. When you're madly in love, you're going to do anything for your lover. The Lord's going to blow on, wow, like a fresh first love again. When you're so in love, you just want to do anything for your bridegroom king. Thank you, Jesus, for fresh surrender by your spirit.
Oh, living letters of Christ Jesus, the word from the beginning, be loosened in this house and fall upon the tons of these saints that are have yielded mouths with sharpened two-edged swords that are likened unto Christ, giving forth mercies and praise unto the one, the Lamb. Even this sword, too, piercing Christ himself. The sword that proceeds of the word from ourselves, matching his body and meeting that pierced wound in his side, giving forth fresh waters and fresh blood, pierced by our love, us his ecstasy as his words and songs say to us this fountain giving forth filling into our mouths refreshing rivers too much to consume that it overflows and falls upon one another and into lands and regions till jerusalem this heavenly kingdom is filled again not just a little hezekiah bubbling up but the fountain of Christ himself laying forth into the land, no longer a barren desert and wilderness as Abraham saw. But we have eyes too to see, like Hannah said, Christ saying to us, you, like John, my perfect fashion remnant, come up here. I must show you what is to come. You that I'm beholden to, only you alone, come. I must show you, come. So here we are in the realm of the saints. Before the register, the firstborn that had been given up to heaven, the martyred ones, the witnesses, Jesus, the family of God reconciled together again. We are finally one. Here we see now the wholeness of Christ. Now that the broken fractures and the little lost lambs have been reconciled and fitted into its last place, so we see fullness restored. Only here in this heavenly realm where Abraham stood, we see the land of the kingdom of God, the promise that always was. And now we see by encountering what faith is, touching the man, faith himself. You, the rock, and Balm Gilead, we lay forth our hand and touch this rock. And we come into a man who was the law and abolished the law. He became the fulfillment of that thing. And now this is our memory stone that we stand upon and remember and know who is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You that would name yourself after man, son of David, that our hearts may be so fashioned that you would name yourself after our love for one another and sit upon that throne. We're arrested by the new development of the awareness of this love of Jesus that we didn't know till we left Babylon and Egypt and Psyche to come into our first estate that we never should have fallen from. Fullness restored. Knowledge, good and evil, forgotten. We stand before a burning bush having left a kingdom that said that it was our father. (sighs) Striking down the ones that would wound our family and were driven out as Christ was into a wilderness and were driven out into a wilderness as Moses was to find him, to be with him. till all that was of the kingdoms before disappears, is completely forgotten, is no longer our formed identity. As we're healed and restored, we don't remember what once was, but all we remember was where Christ was 
in the making. Eba, the testimony himself. There's just such a thick invitation where we're going to enter into uh, a realm of prayer. We are in the Holy of Holies, if it's not completely aware to you. Um, <sighs> I heard him say, he said, you, my sacred remnant that I tore from my side, I dispersed it into the earth and fed it like manna to man so that they would know the sweetness of my life. Eat of the bread of me, the wine of me, and the blood of me that pours through thee. They would come into union and be wed to me. Come. And we say, come. So clearly I see uh, the small tabernacle of Zion uh, pitched here. <laughs> Humble benches to sit upon and a small space for a remnant to gather. The place of meeting we dreamt of from the generals of old and where Aaron and Moses stood and laid themselves waste before him. I saw Christ carry his own ark up Mount Zion. A humble king that would carry the first priest's own ark up to the father to sit upon. <laughs> where he met Moses to say, here, this is what is to be given to my family, to Israel. We see you 12 tribes gathered and encircled around us, holding out the censers of fire. The disbursement of the gifting upon the first priests and to the many, replicated again to the disciples and into your first church as we stand upon this rock. The union in the first rock of the church, the man himself, flesh and blood, not departed, oh, yeah. So Jesus, we, come into this heavenly sanctuary, this tent of meeting, uh, where you kneel before the ark <laughs> and weep with us and make intercession on our behalf and where you say, pray for me. We pray for your benefit, and we pray on your behalf, and we join you like John joined you, when he said, I must show you, and we must come together. And I see that scroll opened and laid forth before us to be read of the things that are to come, that he wants to become so clear these are the things that are to come. You, my beloved, I must share with you. I must impart to you. Christ raising both hands before us with the rabbinic priesthood to impart his rabbinic blessing, his priesthood upon us. I see our hands upon his hands and receiving a commissioning of anointing from the oil that's flowing from his person. Don't you see him kneel before the ark drenched in oil? It's given forth from him and you can smell that fragrance. That which was he was anointed for burial for and to be brought into new life with and unto. Oh, we finally have met you in the small tent of eating here in Zion. 
like Moses, we come to that burning bush. And this is holy ground. We've missed that holiness. We knew in our spirit what that space and place was like. We've hungered and craved after it, but been forlorn and grieved for not understanding. Did I go off? Ooh, did I do something wrong? And just like he told me when I got sick most recently, he said, you did absolutely nothing. And with that surety in us, we know that these lies that we're hearing and passing through us and is said by those of the earth, they have no binding around us. They have no binding around each other. We're given to him. In the same way he's lifting up these hands, pressing his face to ours, meeting those scars. I saw uh, Aaron meeting those hands and pressing his face up against his, and that's where the anointing of the oil that runs through his beard was imparted through Christ. One to one, flesh of my flesh, blood of my blood, the one new man. Married to our bridegroom, Christ Jesus, dressed in the robes, ready to receive us, to finally marry us, for that diamond to come into its setting so we're bound together, that setting ring of the Holy Spirit that's our surety and gift that enwraps itself around us. We already came to a mountain of suffering love. We met him. We were co-crucified with him. We've already descended with him into the depths of Sheol, and he was there, like he said. We watched him overcome death itself and became first witnesses of that. As the word says, we saw him parade them around as a spectacle, principalities, powers, mights, dominions, Lucifer himself. And we were resurrected with him, waiting in a tomb together, grieving over a body that was lost like the disciples did. But he said, to feel that pain of separation for that dark night of his soul, of our soul, only to lay upon his chest and be the ones that hear the first heartbeat and to feel it with his mouth near our ear and hear the first gasp of breath of life, that then with his first intake, he blows into us with his first breath into our ears to hear and to witness within the first seconds of his return. May it be so again as you come back to us, Jesus. Don't you know Israel, Jerusalem is be filled with these living waters to its brim and overflow, that we would be such receivers of this gift from the beginning, desperate for a drink. These gates have been opened finally. Yea, Baba. No longer wandering through hidden tunnels, caves and divides to find nourishment and safety, we're finding it here in his creation. No longer an earth to be toiled over, but us, his actual dirt, <laughs> commingled with spirit, 
see first fruits springing out of us of life. This is what fertile soil is to look like. Ooh. This is how rich it was that a seed would barely fall to the ground and it would spring up with life immediately and turn to face the sun and smile at us as we walk by. This is how it was supposed to be and is. If I only had eyes to see that now we have been granted Jesus. We will never leave this place again because we've tasted it, we've seen it, we know it, and there's a record of it in our hearts and our spirits. Kuleshamratai. Ye Murakai. As Hannah was ministering even now, I see the dove of the Holy Spirit so clearly. It's still and gentle, but we'll go from one side to the other. Look you straight in the eyes and you see his eyes of fire. <laughs> and you recognize that's the fire that was in the bush. We look more closely at that bush and see the tree of life and we see that there's nails in its branches. We see the man within it. And we see us within it. Together with him. Somehow there's a realm in this tree of fire. we've been engrafted onto it and that when Moses saw it he saw us the prophet of old the branches of this living tree See him grabbing at its root and its branches, its core. So hungry for God that we would grasp the bush that is burning. And find we too are not consumed unto death, but actually find vigor of life in it. Like we never knew. This is what I was to be. Burning one with thee, Jesus. Here's my true identity. In a holy crevice on the side of the mountain of God. What some would see as a rocky place, I see springs of living water. I find the rest of the Father. I see a living mercy seed in all of eternity. sacred and holy the tapestry of the robes of the first Melchizedek we see the intricacy of the robes of heaven coming upon us coming upon me Yeba This is really important that we're seeing the first priest, Christ himself. After the order of Melchizedek, him himself making covenant with Abraham, our father, as we were seen as his stars in the sky and the promise to come. As we see Aaron and Moses taking up the Levitic role and giving understanding to it fashion after Christ to know as how he walks in this tabernacle and sanctuary. We didn't know how to minister to him. So clearly I saw Moses oh to one side of Jesus kneel before that ark. That is how he learned to be. Yabah, 
Roto Cortetia blessed at him that he did appear. And as Jackie and Tracy uh, go up, as we actually ascend through this mountain of the Lord, just open your mouth and find songs, hymns, spiritual songs, words, groanings, frequencies, as the Holy Spirit makes intercession on your behalf through Christ Jesus, and you in your perfect unity with him, as the word says. The Holy Spirit speaks, ministers, and groans, and whispers. Manifest as you will. You're given permission, Lord. Because how we've gone about it all this time, we know wasn't the fullness. We're actually finding a total yieldedness with that word means in our hearts, in our minds, in our spirits. That this is actually, I see, the weaving and engrafting into the vine. This is the engrafting period and era. And we're growing at a phenomenal rate once we're truly taking from the core, not just partially. So Lord, we come up through these gates, this archway of trust, rapturous praise, carrying with you this ark as priests of the sun. I hear those keys dangling from your side of life and death. So how could death ever descend upon me if I follow this man who carries these keys for me? The continual reminder of victory every time I hear them jingle, clank, dance and make melody. Even the way he moves, we hear that song. <laughs> Following this continual light, darkness will never fall again. And we can step into that heavenly Jerusalem where it is always day because we sit with the radiance. Eba, Therabase. I see us all dispersing around this mountain of Zion and finding our place on all sides, uh, heights and depths, and meeting its gates. The ones that have been closed are now open. They were waiting for you to match your hand to the rear of it with Christ Jesus. So, to taste. Just yield and agree as we go into a time of intercession. This praying for him, I see Jesus matching us on the sides. Wisdom, come and stand at the gates with us and give knowledge and understanding. Knowledge at our right, understanding at our front. Ooh. Wisdom at our left, come and sing, because we have desired, we yearn after wisdom to stand and sing, that we would know her, that we would hear the goodness that comes forth from her. Not that she has any forth of agenda, but actually imparts the revelation of the gift of God by just her presence. So with that, I see a simple just click of the latch from the rear of the gate from Zion, so that on one side of the forest, it is open unto them those that have dwelt in the forest who thought they were mystical and lost in the new age. Ooh, kada, sere, sabrate. Encamping around a fire that was false, it kept them slightly warm, but not warm enough. But they actually feel the gusts and the breeze coming forth from the heights of Sinai that are now pushing through this gate that's been opened. Ooh, by this one remnant too west side oh show sure. and they actually recognize that fire goes out and they went it's been lost it's been forgotten all I know is to follow the wind there must be a more powerful source and here they are they stand at the gate and somehow with revelation wisdom and knowledge they actually touch the kabod of Christ as they come through its doorways and are anointed with its oils that Christ put at its top and on its side and are met with the blood itself. They actually meet and are taken into salvation by touching the blood that was put there by Moses. 
So death now passes. And I see some of them watching, the ones that have fallen from the outside, and they're running in because they saw how the firstborn were taken from them. And they said, I will not be taken. These ones have found the true light. And they immediately are found before the Father who sits before the throne, or on the throne, but I mean before the tree of life that's been transplanted into its highest. Where we stand far above all principality, power, might, and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. For he put all things under his feet and made him head over all things to his church, which is us, his body, the fullness of who filleth all in all. So you are filling all in all. There is no naked place in this mountain of God. He was waiting for us to return. And I saw where Jesus has been pacing back and forth, praying over the trails where we would stand. And as I've seen Moses send this mountain, we too follow after you, who saw the prophetic picture before us with Abraham. Oh, and Elijah transfigured us too. We would stand at this gate like John and see Christ transfigured as he was every time he prayed and join with the first prophets who he told. It's like coming back to the bush. This is what they were seeing. It's the other side. Moses stood at the bush and saw Jesus. Jesus stood in the garden and saw them where they actually gave forth and said yes to the promise. So we're saying yes to the promise from the side of Christ Jesus, from this garden. Because that's how we meet you, O family of God, is through Christ Jesus himself. You gave us the abundant entrance. So you on the south side who follow out into the oceans that have been lost and other spirits have hovered upon it, they've already been laid waste, forgotten, and drifted out into the far depths. The Holy Spirit's been brooding over these waters with anticipation. It's actually been extremely violent. But you that have the fountains of life that have come now to the south side, you are bursting forth the south gate and the waters are meeting the waters of the oceans, and it's filling again with the meeting of the Spirit. And it's a jumping water back and forth, like as we often see the fires jump back and forth from the lampstands of God, there's a commingling of the goodness that that which was hovered from the beginning over the depths of the deep, the depths of the deep are rediscovered, and that's where we're gonna find Jesus, who's been crucified before the foundation of the earth, where the promise was first made. I see the Holy Spirit as the waters pouring forth into this ocean saying, this is where I was and this is where I am to be, so come and follow and dance with me. Ooh, south, garaba, sembre. I see the ships coming in now that have been seeking safe harbor. They've seen, I actually see where so many of them had fallen upon the rocks but we're now directing them with the light of God through this gate. Actually, the top of this archway of the gate is a fire and we've lit it together. This is, it's so precise, this narrow gateway where you're to come into harbor, all the provision, this supernatural, like I call silk road from heaven of tangible assets and goods that are to be imparted into us, a remnant. They're, it's a physical trade from heaven. You've been waiting, you've been prayed forth centuries ago. This is where we come in. Well, I actually saw Jesus just put the keys of the kingdom in our hands and the keys of death and the grave. We can hold such a thing, Jesus. They're so light. <laughs> This is not a heavy thing. <laughs> because we're one with you, we see the simplicity in all of it. 
we've known the pain and the suffering, but now we're really witnessing the power of Jesus, the lightness and simplicity of Jesus to overcome the enemy. Enemy seems like even such a silly word <laughs> now. Like it's an obstacle even, it's not, it's just so silly. <laughs> It's this easy. We love opening meetings like this because we're able to just minister to the heart so directly, and then the rest of it can be beholding him. So I actually have seen and see again our bodies like a zipper from head to toe, like a body bag, opened up, and we're stepping through it. That bag was the pride of self. It looked just like your exterior, your identity, your generational inheritances. <laughs> You've tried to apply blood to it and it doesn't hit what you in the center on the inside. We see the zipper from the inside and we rend it from head to toe and it falls off like a plastic bag. We have no second thought about wanting to take it up again, return to it, or even mourn who we once were and what we were so proud of being. Who our family is, our traits, where we become puffed up because God told me <laughs> and told others, do you know what God told me about who I am? That body bag of death that's been weighing you down <laughs> and you're wondering why you can't see or move or can't get out of this Egypt. Whoa. I actually hear the bags falling, they're so heavy. <laughs> <laughs> and it's it's happening like <laughs> because now you're hearing each other's and just seeing whoa this is <laughs> drop the back <laughs> you need to drop it right now <laughs> just drop it <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, some of you, you have a zipper in back and in front. And it all meets up at the top like a banana. Just... <laughs> this full unveiling. And I see attendants and the ministers of God opening up so it looks beautiful as you emerge. Because <laughs> you're so beautiful. They're like, wait, wait. <gasps> there we go. Yeah. <laughs> And then I, that I see some of you crying, you're like, I'm the remnant. I didn't know. I didn't know. <laughs> Oof. This is so important where we're going to go. It's a complete setup for this weekend. I'm going to lead you into an encounter, holy, <laughs> that I had a couple weeks ago. And you're going to see how well it dovetails, especially with Katie's... Um, message. Whew. When pride is stripped off, you see that being that had a right to cohabitate with you because it feels good, honestly. Like, if you've ever struggled with depression, it feels good. <laughs> you know? I'm not saying it as a testimony. I'm saying 
as you're dwelling in that falsehood, it's self-feeding, you know, that victim mentality, you know, like, give us attention, us is a good term, <laughs> all my pieces and parts, <laughs> give us attention. <laughs> Yes, you know, feed this identity crisis. <laughs> As we've unveiled ourselves for who we really are, those were like the walls of Babylon, you know? <laughs> What's falling in front of me? It's like spider webs falling. <laughs> Whoa. Bye-bye. <laughs> um, <laughs> pride looks like this very spiritual, godly being. I mean, Lucifer, right? What he appeared like. It's blue, it's radiant. And even as it leaves, you go, was this? Yes, this was good that it left. And the reason I know it's not of him is because when it leaves me, it meets the spirit of death in the back and they leave together. Death and pride are bedfellows. Pride comes before a fall. <laughs> And where is deliverance from death in perfect humility and rest of just saying, I believe. Yeah. Eric and I were talking about that last time we were together, that that's all we have to do. Just believe. There are no other works. <laughs> but do we believe, like, he laid, like Eric shared last time? That's the difference. I'm actually seeing in our hearts as saying, I believe. I actually really believe because where I thought I knew was the spirit of knowledge, or sorry, not the spirit of knowledge, the tree of knowledge. And that's why we say we didn't know because it was a false impartation that carried death with it. We needed the spirit of knowledge, the true original, and understanding with it. So, oof. The reason we didn't know is that we haven't had the spirit of understanding join us with our wisdom and knowledge of him. We've been utilizing revelation without understanding, but it's only that we can come into this place by now being humble, children, and honestly believing. If you're not in the truth of belief, how could you understand? or receive from the Spirit of God. Jesus himself, leaning, our, leaning his head upon our head. So let's just speak over our bodies. I'm gonna use my name, use your name. Oh. Land of Benjamin, I bless you. Oof, oof, oof. <laughs> this land that is married unto God, as in Isaiah, we have that been playing the harlot by running to and fro, worshiping idols and trying to fulfill the desires of this soul of pride. We remarry this land and we bless the land with the oil that drips forth from Christ himself. Ooh. Soul of Benjamin, I bless you. I'm thankful for you. And this spirit that dwelleth in me. Ooh. This mind, this brain, our heart, Heart of thyself, speak forth. Give forth the issuance to minister unto God and know forth the true desires bypassing mind or brain, sorry, coming into communion with mind of the spirit that is renewed by Christ Jesus himself. So heart be joined to my mind that is Christ. Don't you see these gateways open in your soul? These gateways sit in your soul, which is at your center. This is the gateway of belief. So wisdom, speak forth blessing and faith through the gateway of belief that sits in the center of our soul. 
we roar belief and faith through the gateways of our soul. And wisdom cry forth at these gates. See, this is the realm of heaven. You see the elders casting their crowns and you begin to understand, I wear this crown too and I know what it feels like to lay it and throw down what he gave me. Royal diadems, you know, fashioned by his own hand that it too is too weighty and it's his worthiness that we're casting down at his feet because it's just need to... So, where I haven't understood, I lean my head upon you understanding. There's no other way for me to grasp this. So as I laid my head upon understanding, he took me to the quarry, where I'd been at the base of this holy mountain gathering stones in preparation for his coming, for my ministry, for what must be my purpose, for our children and our children's children. That as actually we believe that as we bring these stones to this holy mountain, we'll begin to fashion steps that we can stand upon. And here, I'm just trusting in this vision with Christ. Where are we going to go? And I take this bag full of stones, and I begin to lay them down on this ground around a memory place, what looks like a cross. And I begin stacking them. And then I begin to realize I'm, it's like I'm building an altar. And then I realize, why have I been gathering stones? And I see how brutalized my body is and how old and decrepit I look. And the deep lines and dryness and wrinkles, the sign of age, this old and still working in the mines and the quarries, a slave, a bondservant, to who? I don't even see. But I know I'm supposed to gather these stones because this is what they've done. And it's building this cathedral to God, this holy mountain. And my children will step upon these stones and ascend higher. And they'll meet the oracles in the higher places that'll teach them the ways and the hidden mysteries. And now I see myself, this child, in a higher place on the mountain before this oracle that's giving forth all the things of success and ways and how to achieve the higher place of the mountain where God dwells. If only I could get there. But I've been chosen, I've been set apart, I've been joined into this small class of, I look around me, there must be about five of us. With the holy oracle, there's only two or three. And because he's achieved these things too and stands before that holy place, I obviously, by contact, must eventually be known to have that same access. And because I've laid my hand upon understanding and yielded my life to Christ in private prayer and found myself tossing and turning in a bed of travail, of pain of separation and grief, not understanding, something's been ministered on my behalf to change a thing, to change kind of my conception of where I'm standing and sitting here. No longer are these words appealing to me from this holy teacher, this rabbi. Uh, and to my right, I see this exit door in the side of the mountain. 
I turn up to this teacher and we say, what is this exit door? Where does it lead? It's code. I don't know. It's old. No one goes through there. It's, it's for a disaster, I guess. So fixated on that door because everything coming from this teacher, everything coming from, you know, all these other students around this oracle who I can't stand any of them because they're all, <laughs> what is it about them? You know, they are so holy and, but they reek of, I guess it's pride, of arrogance really. And he says to me in my spirit, what you see is the spirit of psyche. Psyche and knowledge are one. Their body, mind, and spirit of the other kingdom. This is the mountain of psyche that you've been living on. There's a kingdom unto the tree of knowledge of good and evil, and we have lived in it for too long. But it's not until you're stripped from pride that you see that you've been worshiping the God of Psyche. I get up, fixated on an old rusty door, and I walk through it. I don't know where it goes, but I'm just done with that place. And all of a sudden, the mountains start moving and shifting around me. And I see living letters come forth on these walls. I see gateways open and close. I see hieroglyphs of ancient kingdoms and see that this realm of psyche, what was worshiped by Egypt and Babylon and is Baal itself. And, and there's Moses. to confirm, to say, you've been delivered. That's the same way I left. They don't know that they're slaves. They're puffed up with knowledge. So we have come, as Moses did, leaving ancient walls because we found that we belong to the tribe of Israel, the family of God. It's Moses that didn't have Egypt on him anymore. And I know that this is many of your stories too. That's why we've come before the bush because as Moses was a deliverer, so are you a Moses company to go back into Psyche and rescue those other ones. That's what we did today. We put the blood on the gates. We know the name of our God, the I am. And as I even saw today in worship, we're holding that rod that fashion golden serpent that's Christ itself, and we're seeing the snakes of Egypt fall and be laid waste and consumed. And again, it's like those keys of life and death. It's so light. It has nothing to do with our power or the holiness of our walk necessarily. It's that we said yes and we believed. So thank you, Jesus. I just want to activate all of you and just in a time of response, you're no longer bound by webs, confines, or not understanding what is going on, like Hannah was talking about. We, it, the reason we're going into this new season of freedom is because we don't have that old paradigm that we're worshiping anymore, or what made sense. The minute psyche falls, sense is gone. <laughs> And all we see are the eyes of Jesus. So burn in us again, Jesus. We're not going to wander in deserts. We're going to live in this tabernacle of Zion. 
and we're going to be drenched in the oil that runs forth from your beard and your hair because we are one. And because of that, we've forgotten death and pain. Who remembers it anymore? All we remember was the testimony of Christ in the midst of all of it. And that's the only part of our testimony we remember even to share with anyone is just the Jesus part. <laughs> Not how bad it was or who was part of the journey <laughs> or who laid hands on you <laughs> or the word they gave you. But when you finally saw Jesus for yourself face to face, because I know that resonates with so many of you. I know it resonates with me that I honestly don't remember what it felt like in the darkest parts. <laughs> so who wants to forget? <laughs> it's already gone. Like Hannah said, the wind of the Spirit come and blow away the dross. Jesus, you had already come in with your winnowing fork and made light work of it. <laughs> All's been finished. We are coming into the understanding of being co-crucified with Christ and praying the first prayer of true intercession. Father, forgive them because they know not what they do as we look at unto all man with the eyes of Christ himself. You are forgiven. Father, us too, as one with Jesus, we commit our spirits into your hands. And therefore say, it is finished. It is all behind and now we stand and live in the realm of the other side of the door of it is finished. It's done. No witchcraft, no intimidation, no principality. They were all defeated, it's already done, you're already resurrected, and it's actually happened for you, you've been renewed, you know it. It is finished. I say unto your spirit, it is finished. Your soul is resonating back unto God, it has been finished, and you have won, and I know it, and I believe it. I have the faith of God, not my own. Arise, O oh ancient one, and let us see the unity of the body that was fashioned before the foundation of the world and met and co-crucified. I see you, ancient body of the church of God, co-crucified with Jesus from the beginning. We were already co-crucified from the beginning, O oh ancient rock that had been fashioned and hidden inside of him. Oh, we come and we witness with John and Mary and look upon a cross of the beloved one shaking with pain. Not just pain, but in co-travail of the ecstasy of all of it being accomplished unto our behalf. And because we have our eyes transfixed upon him, we feel the spirit of intercession that was pouring forth from his side. We felt what he felt. John felt what he felt. Mary knew his mother closer to him. She felt the same pain, just like you feel your child's pain. That is co-intercession. Our lives are intercession, not just when you lock up in a room and pray. The acts of Moses and the prophets, they went on a journey and they all testified of Christ. So as we move about this earth, we are testifying of Christ. We're writing the gospels and apocalypse of his return and what it'll appear as. God, even as we move in this space, we are witnesses and heirs and testimonies of the coming of Christ Jesus. Our bodies appear as the throne room of heaven. Our faces shift unto your face and of the four living creatures that surround us as we sit on the throne in him, 
that as they, any man would look upon us, they would see the elders surrounding us. Oof, gosh, Deheshki. <laughs> and the elders, too, crying out, holy. And in the distance, we hear the maiden's song of the song of Moses, of how our deliverer, our warring king, ugh, he made light work of them, and he drowned them in the sea. No chariot will ever come again after me. Even Pharaoh himself has been lost, and his child has died. There is no more line unto Egypt, because there's one king enthroned upon these lands. We will not build our kingdom upon foundation stones of ash and dross, but only stones marked by the blood of Christ Jesus. The gates of hell will not prevail against it. It's already finished. He said it. It is done, and this mind is renewed. This is the mind of one inside the throne of God. shamra keti lehestu sombro shamanahiki. <laughs> wow, I'm actually seeing us standing before the pharaohs of the earth and their eyes enlightened. I see the light of Christ shining upon their face because it's emanating from Christ in us. And they're seen and I see them Ooh, it's happening even as we're praying together. There are tears streaming from their eyes. <laughs> uh, I actually see Pharaoh with tears streaming from his eyes. The heartache of what's been lost and believing that he has no opportunity to receive from the one God. We minister Christ unto you, O kings of the earth. It is only by him that your generation shall be saved. <laughs> uh. Oh, wow. Uh. They're falling to the ground. And... and all at once, the hand of Christ with holes in it upon his head, and he is delivered. Your kingdoms of the earth are delivered. I see Jesus telling them, Oh, your kingdom's been delivered. Uh, it's finished. It's won. It's... Look up. You don't... Oh. We actually would see the ones that maybe we even know have been cursing us. Even difficult relationships. And even where we look down in Christ on the cross and saying, Jesus, look at them. Look at how they're manipulating, you know, John and James and Mary. Look at how they're bringing forth the cancer into the body. What about that one? And then you turn and look at his suffering face. Forgive them because they know not what they do. So how we too cannot forgive those ones where we're actually hung on a cross with him, what power do they have over him? over the work of what's being accomplished before him. It's not happening down there, it's happening up here on a cross. What's happening amongst those kids, those children, it's done. It's not happening there, it happened on the cross, it's done. You're fine, you're above it all. Hey, Baba, sotor shombra tambra teambra. So much of this is being understood in your hearts, but we're actually prophesying outside of these doors and these walls. We're ministering to the lost sheep from these open gates that have been in the forest and caught up in the new age and 
Christians that have never seen the face of Jesus and just don't know, they don't know. <laughs> this is the sound that's going out to them. It's hitting their center of belief. It's hitting their souls. Their spirit is resonating a testimony unto themselves. This is who we were fashioned after. This is the vine that I had actually even been cut from and need to be re-engrafted into. It was my beginning and it's my end. I just see such hope being released into the earth. I see smiling sheep in the distance because they know what's over there. They know what happens after they come through the gate and that they can have it. <laughs> come on in. <laughs> come in. Do you see how light this work is of prayer? That it's not the old way of praying, that it's not, whoa! <laughs> it doesn't hurt when you know it's done. And you're not just having to read a decree and try and believe it, you actually understand it because he showed it to you. And you're agreeing with his heart and it's actually through this realm of understanding and infused knowledge of just believing that it's, it's accomplished in your life of intercession. Praying is not going to cost you anymore in terms of the pain of body being given over, the pain of resources being taken away. You're not gonna be feeling like you lose anything or even weary from it anymore in this place. It's actually just gonna keep building and ascending and higher and easier and easier. This is where that rest is. Hmm. So you intercessors, judgment of Christ was spoken from the cross and has been rotten to the earth by a risen king. These are the days of salvation and ease again. And you'll be co-participants in it. And it's never coming back. The old way is never coming back. Because you've encountered it. It's your new reality. You didn't know it could be this way. So now that you know, <laughs> it's made a record in your heart and you'll always go back. Wow, what a way to start, eh? <laughs> um, I ate into your lunchtime. <laughs> but this is our feasting, right? So if you need to eat, you can go eat. <laughs> no, actually, this is an incredible campus. We feel so spoiled to be here and to be hosted by um, Crosswinds. Um, oh, gosh, I'm going to lose it. But anyway. Just bless this place as you are about it. Um, there's like prayer trails, because I know meetings like this, usually if I'm at them, I'm like, I have to go be with him, I can't, like, I need to be alone. <laughs> um, maybe your hotel room or your house is too far away. There's trails, there's a cross over there with seats, just, just stare at them, you know? <laughs> and uh, there's tons of places around here to eat. Google will show you everything. And, uh, <laughs> and you know, there's, there's tables and chairs out there if you want to grab something quick, maybe even, and run back, you can dine out there. And, and then Healing Rooms, too, uh, is going to start now. <laughs> Aid into their time. Sorry. I believe. Do you want to? Yeah. <laughs> Can't wait. Eric Gilmore is at the next session and more worship. And uh, wow. I mean, what, what happens next, you guys? <laughs> it just builds and builds. <laughs> there you go. Glory to glory. 
<laughs> yeah, so we're going to ask everyone to leave this room. Um, we're just going to get some things set up for the healing rooms. Um, you're welcome to leave stuff in the chairs, and we're going to rearrange everything. If you're going to stay for the healing rooms, then you can line up outside kind of the way that you did on the way in, and then we're going to have you come in in maybe about 10, 15 minutes. Yeah, healing rooms teams, please stay. <laughs> we need you. Need your help. All right, we'll see you guys in just a few minutes.